Some of the biggest stories of commercial failure for companies approaching the end of their financial life cycle involve landfills. This is great news for Frank's Landfill Emporium, but for others, including a Star Wars publisher we'll be talking about today, this is a less celebrated turn of events. The most famous of these stories in online nerd communities is probably the Atari game landfill, the short version of which focuses on one of the worst games ever made, an E.T. tie-in of which Atari produced 5 million copies and only sold 1.5 million, which is fewer than 5 million. As we all know, E.T. appeared in The Phantom Menace, where members of his species were also members of the Senate, and the Star Wars product of today's video also comes from The Phantom Menace, so the real lesson is to never trust E.T. The 90s are most associated in Star Wars publishing with the rise of the expanded universe, and its first steps into becoming a large, long, generally but not always coherent story. The end of the decade brought something new and exciting, the prequel trilogy's first entry, The Phantom Menace, released in May 1999. The launch of these new movies brought with them a series of new visual dictionaries, basically reference books to the Star Wars universe filled with background information on the Star Wars movies. The first of these, released in late 1998, covered some of the original trilogy content and was produced and sold in reasonable numbers made up by rational human beings. The excitement around The Phantom Menace, though, convinced someone at Dorling Kindersley, also known as DK Press, which published the guides, that they should be shooting for the stars with the upcoming visual dictionary for the first entry in the prequels. In this case, shooting for the stars meant printing 18 million copies of the first edition of the book. Christopher Davis, one of the founders of the company, who was also the editorial director, publisher, and deputy chairman, wrote essentially a memoir about his time with the company, and claimed that he was unaware of this decision, blaming a so-called marketing man. Only about 5 million of the books sold, with many essentially being given away in bundles with other purchases, and this massive mistake was a significant factor in the impending failure of the company. It faced a £25 million loss in the last six months of 1999, which is about £55 million in today's money, or £92 million Canadian dollars in Monopoly money. Of this, £14 million were from the excessive Star Wars stock, with other stock only amounting to £5 million, and with the company admitting the Star Wars overprinting was a significant factor in their dire financial straits. Ultimately, the company had to be bought by Pearson to stay afloat which in my mind is enough to justify calling the company dead as an independent entity at least. Like, they're basically just buying it to get the brand recognition at that point. The 13 million copies of unsold visual dictionaries then went straight into the landfill, which I can't really build a narrative tension around since I spoiled that at the start of the video. While the Star Wars fiasco was definitely a factor here, I think contemporary coverage mostly ignored another important factor being the rise of the internet and its impact on publishing. One Wall Street Journal article from the time about the acquisition did point out only the major players in the industry could have the internet presence needed to succeed, and a lot of people in 1999 really underestimated the impact the internet both could have and was already having on various industries. That being said, publishing 18 million copies of that visual dictionary was an absolutely horrible, horrible idea. Thank you for watching though, remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time.